I'm Michael West with VMware. With Project Pacific, Kubernetes is embedded directly in vSphere and enables a new construct called a namespace. Namespaces allow IT operations teams to attach policy and assign to development teams. All developer workloads run in namespaces they are assigned. Administrators create and manage namespaces directly in the vSphere web client Enforcement of these policies occurs in both vSphere and in the underlying Kubernetes cluster. Let's see how this works. Our IoT developer team needs infrastructure for their new application, so the operations team creates a new namespace for them. The IoT platform team is given edit access to the namespace. Identity and authentication are handled through vSphere single sign-on. Actual authorization is handled within the Kubernetes cluster. From kubectl, you see that not only has a namespace been created in vSphere, but is also created on the Kubernetes cluster. There is a service in vCenter that is managing the coordination between vCenter and the Kubernetes cluster objects. The edit role we selected in the vSphere web client maps to a Kubernetes cluster role called edit. A Kubernetes role binding was also created that mapped the edit cluster role to the vSphere IoT platform group. This application is important to the business, so we add a vSphere storage policy to the namespace that forces the use of all flash storage. This causes a Kubernetes storage class to be created on the cluster. By adding resource limits to the namespace, the policy applies collectively to all VMs, ESX native pods, and Kubernetes clusters running in that namespace. The CPU and memory limits are enforced by vSphere resource pools that back each namespace. The storage limits are enforced through storage resource quotas created on the Kubernetes cluster. We can see an entitlement for the high performance SSD storage class created when we set the policy and a total storage limit set at two terabytes. 